Welcome to Face to Face. Our guest today is Sanjay Kog. He is a Vice President of World Hindu Council of America and one of the key organizers of Threats 2019 Conference in Boston. Sanjay, welcome back to our show. Thank and you, Upendraji. And uh, a warm namaste to everybody, uh, your audience, as well as happy Diwali to all of them. Excellent. Good timing. Yes. So, before we talk a little bit about logistics about the conference, uh, which is happening on uh, November 1st, 2nd, mm -hmm. and 3rd in Hilton, Woburn, uh, give us an idea about the audience. So, I know you have about 50 speakers. Yes. Basically, who's who from different sectors of the, the community and the economy and the technology. Yes. Uh, how many states are represented at the conference? Okay. A uh, little bit about Threads Conference. Uh, it's not a local conference that we are organizing, but it's a national conference we are planning to have. And first time it will be held in Boston. As you rightly said, November 1st, 2nd and 3rd are the dates. Uh, and uh, we will start on Friday evening. As far as the registration is concerned, uh, we have a national audience. We have right now, our delegates uh, are um, representing 27 states in America. In the United States. In the United States. But it's a very big representation. It's, it's a good representation. I was hoping that we will have uh, delegates from every state mm -hmm. in America and a few from our neighboring country, Canada. Sure. Uh, because this is about, the conference is about the Indians, Hindus, who are settled in America and it's about their trials and tribulations of coming to this country, settling in this country and also the opportunities that this country has given us. Um, we appreciate that opportunity to realize the American dream in whatever way it is for every individual and then also to talk about the contributions that Hindu Americans uh, have been making and are continuing to make uh, such contributions to make the American society a better place. And then again, when you say the word Hindu, it does not necessarily mean from India, but from all over the world. Yes, Hindu is about the people. It's about a culture. Uh, it's about all the people who have had their roots in Bharat. Mm -hmm. I'm not using the word India, Bharat. Sure. So it's the greater uh, area of uh, uh, the Indian subcontinent uh, and anybody who had their roots there now, and now those people are settled all across the globe sure. and all these people have at some point in time come to America to settle here to realize a better life and it's about them and it's also about the people who uh, uh, are Americans who are born and raised here but do believe in Hindu value system. So when you say Hindu, it's not necessarily a region, it's just a region, it's the, the roots, the Correct. old, the old Correct. Line It's the... not about the religion. This is not a religious conference at all. It's about uh, educating people about the contributions of Hindu Americans. And Hindu Americans have come to America from all across the globe, not just India. Sure. So now let's talk a little bit about logistics. So the conference uh, registration starts when and okay. just guide us through. Okay. Uh, before I go into that, I, I think I uh, did not answer the second part of your first question and that was about the registration representation I told you from uh, 27 Service. states, but I did not tell you that we have emphasized on the uh, New England area, we have emphasized on the Tri-Strait area mm -hmm. and all along the eastern seaboard okay. that because that's the catchment area people can easily drive right. to mm -hmm. Boston. Sure. They will come here to appreciate the fall colors mm -hmm. and then also be able to attend the Threads conference. So that is basically our catchment area and obviously this is in Boston so every Bostonian, uh, proud um, Hindu, proud Bostonian has to be part of this and yeah. many of our uh, local people have already registered and there are certain people who have promised to register but haven't yet so I want to appeal to them as well. This is their opportunity. Do it before this weekend because after this weekend we're going to close the registration. Excellent. So now let's come back to the largest sector. <coughs> yes. So the people arrive, registration, they can register on Friday or, or on Thursday too? Uh, See, Honestly, we have had this registration open for last 
couple of months. Mm-hmm. And uh, since that time, people who are interested in knowing about the uh, the, the theme of the uh, conference have registered and have been actively uh, pursuing their friends and family to register. Well, from logistic point of view, we do not actually uh, encourage anybody coming uh, on site and trying to register because okay. logistically it becomes a nightmare. Okay, right? sure. Uh, we want to be able to uh, provide the best facilities and the best uh, uh, arrangements for all our delegates who will come to attend. Therefore, we need to be able to tell us the caterer, tell the hotel staff. Everybody, they have to make arrangements. And so this is in the Hilton Woburn. This is in Hilton Woburn. It's a four-star hotel. Uh, it's close to Boston Logan Airport. It's very easily accessible uh, by transit. And it is easily accessible uh, if you're driving because it's close to both I-95 and I-93. Sure. Uh, and, and also it's very close to Woburn. Uh, Anderson Woburn uh, Transportation Center. Mm-hmm. So one can actually from Logan Airport take the Logan Express and from the uh, Anderson Center, the hotel shuttle can pick them up. And those who are driving easily, I said it's accessible. And plenty of free parking. Free parking there, yes. Yeah. There's yeah. no restriction on the parking. So let's come back to now Friday evening. So yes. people arrive there, what the cocktail reception yes. or something? Yes. Or? See, Friday is basically the inaugural session and networking time and also some entertainment because there are people, like I said, who have come from across the country, they have flew in and we want to uh, have the best reception for them. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what we have planned is uh, on Friday evening at 5.30, we'll start uh, with a dinner reception. And uh, then at seven o'clock, we have the uh, inaugural, which starts at seven. We have our key people who will be present there uh, they will light the ceremonial lamp, followed by keynote speeches by two of our um, uh, chief guests. One is uh, uh, the uh, Governor Michael Dukakis. Mm-hmm. He is one of the keynote speakers. The second one is Sri Rajiv Malhotra. Mm-hmm. He is the second speaker. Mm-hmm. And this will be followed by an entertainment section. And I don't want to disclose what we are sure. going to do for entertainment because that's the surprise element. Okay. I want people to come and appreciate and enjoy it. Okay. And in between, there is a lot of networking time. Hmm. As as you know, and you mentioned that we have uh, eight different panel discussions mm-hmm. uh, at this conference and also two special uh, discussions uh, in the evening on Saturday. So there is a galaxy of uh, people who represent the Indian diaspora as, as well as the Hindu community in this country, they are all going to be there and it's an opportunity to network with them, to find out what is happening uh, in the industry, what is their vision for tomorrow, how are the Hindus going to be uh, partnering with the American society in, uh, in, in, in developing a better future for our children for tomorrow. Okay. And then what happens on Saturday? Saturday is a very busy day, okay. very, very busy day. So I, I, I rarely tell everybody that you should be there on time uh, at 8 o'clock because uh, in the morning, again, we start the day with morning ragas mm-hmm. uh, for half an hour. And one of the best in America is going mm-hmm. to be uh, uh, sharing that talent of uh, morning ragas for mm-hmm. half an hour. And 8.30 promptly, uh, we will start with the first session. Um, and there's a breakfast before. Of course, yeah, uh, yeah. The, the food I mean, is uh, part of everything, sure. everybody's need and food is part of the conference, food is part of the registration fee and all. So there is every meal right from morning breakfast to breaks that we have to lunch uh, and the uh, afternoon snack and the dinner, Perfect. everything is there. So the And this is all in, included in the registration? It's so. all included in the registration. Yeah. And then, um, then uh, on Saturday, we have the first session starts at 8.30. The way it has been designed so that we have all the sessions we can uh, easily accommodate. Every session is 75 minutes. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a keynote speaker for each session. And then we have like three or four panelists. Uh, what, the way we have visioned it is that the keynote speaker will give an overall vision of the panel, mm-hmm. what the panel theme is about. Uh, and, and then uh, each individual speaker will speak for five, six minutes. Uh, in between them, they will talk about 30, 35 minutes. Then we will open it up 
uh, to the audience to have an interactive se session so that the audience will interact with these uh, uh, presenters, ask them questions, find out what's going on, and uh, it will be a good interactive session. Excellent. So, so we have uh, six sessions on Saturday. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after dinner, we have two special sessions. Uh, what uh, those special sessions are, uh, the uh, Vedanta and consciousness have, have uh, a, a close relationship. Mm -hmm. So we have designed one session on Saturday evening called Science of Consciousness. Mm -hmm. So in that one, we have Professor uh, Subhash Kak. Mm -hmm. uh, he is leading that session and we have other professors from Harvard and other uh, uh, premier institutions in America mm -hmm. who have been working on the consciousness and uh, how that relates to Vedanta and what is it going to be for future generations. Mm -hmm. How are we tapping into consciousness and how does that relate to science? Uh, is there a connection? So it's a very, very, uh, very uh, interesting subject in my uh, opinion Excellent. that so people will be very excited. And those will be after dinner. On that Saturday. one is after dinner on Saturday. Saturday. And there is another one. See, we have had so many uh, people uh, who wanted to be the speakers on any of the panels, but you can only accommodate sure, sure. some. So those of us who have done, uh, have made some excellent achievements uh, and have overcome uh, some uh, tough uh, situations, these are the people who actually we chose. Uh, and then we have designed the last session on Saturday as the lightning talk session. Mm -hmm. And in that one, we are giving every one of these um, panelists five minutes time. It's like a uh, lightning talk. They will come up, they will talk about what they have been working on, what project it is, and they will talk about what were the difficulties they had to overcome and then how they established themselves and how they actually have a vision to make life better in this country. So now in that panel, anybody can come or you have a number of people? Who no, no, not anybody can oh, come okay. on any panel. Okay. They, they, we have no, no, I'm talking about that special panel. Where that special panel is also like okay. we have selected people. Okay, okay, I just wanted to make sure that, okay. And then what happens on Sunday? On Sunday, again, we start actually... Um, start with the breakfast? Uh, breakfast, obviously. And then it's followed by uh, morning, uh, some musical, which is actually being... Uh, delivered by our own Suchita Rao mm -hmm. uh, from Boston sure. area and we wanted to encourage our local groups as well and she will sing some morning uh, bhajans and uh, ragas and then it will be followed by two sessions on uh, sa uh, Sunday morning uh, which is the education panel mm -hmm. and also the panel on um, service and philanthropy mm -hmm. and those two sessions are, are on Sunday morning and that will be uh, followed by concluding uh, session. That one, we have two keynote speakers. We have one Mr. Tahir Gora, mm -hmm. who is from Canada, uh, who is coming as a keynote speaker uh, to conclude. Mm -hmm. And we also have um, uh, Sri Darshan uh, Hathi mm -hmm. from Art of Living organization, mm -hmm. who is also coming as a keynote speaker for the mm -hmm. concluding session. And then we have two of our own people um, uh, from Boston area, uh, uh, Mahapola as mm -hmm. well as uh, Neeraj Kumar mm -hmm. and they will deliver concluding remarks on behalf of the World Hindu Council of America about what is it we wanted to do, how did the conference progress and what is the conclusion we have derived as an organization. So they will share that. So now uh, you tell us how did you get involved with uh, uh, World Hindu Council of America? Okay. Um, um, Many people know about me, I come from Kashmir sure. and Kashmir, uh, being a Hindu in Kashmir, there are, there's a history to it that we were pushed out of Kashmir. So when I came to America, I came here in 91. Mm -hmm. I came as a student. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, where did you go? Uh, I went to uh, University of Massachusetts. Okay. So uh, I did my master's in civil engineering here. Yeah. Uh, and I had come here just with the thought that I will do my master's by that time things will improve and I will be go able back. to go back to Kashmir mm -hmm. but that never happened and I had to settle here and uh, during that time I realized I, I have to give some aspect of culture to my children, mm -hmm. to my boys mm -hmm. who are born and raised here and also to make sure that they stay Hindus. 
I'm a Hindu mm -hmm. and I'm a proud Hindu. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make sure of those two things. One is to make sure they are they stay Hindus mm -hmm. and then they have the uh, the rich heritage mm -hmm. and culture that I have uh, grown up with that I can pass it on to them. With those two things in mind, I started to volunteer for non-profit organization. I initially started uh, heavily with the Kashmiri Overseas uh, right, Organization yeah, yeah. and I also represented the Kashmiri Association as its president for two terms. Mm. And then also side by side, I've been working with the uh, World Hindu Council of America mm -hmm. in Boston chapter and then also in the national level uh, as part of its governing council. Mm -hmm. And now I am the vice president uh, mm -hmm. for, and I've been uh, working with them for last 20 years. 20, 20 years? Yes, mm -hmm. 20 years in various capacities uh, as a proud volunteer trying to do. So you must be also very proud of what <coughs> happened with the uh, Indian government, what did in Kashmir. What do you think of that? Yes, I am very, very pleased because uh, Article 370 was. Uh, basically not allowing the total integration of Kashmir uh, with India. Uh, it was that special status was basically giving certain elements in the Kashmiri society the benefit of uh, certain things, but the masses were not actually realizing those benefits. And over the years, first in 50s, then in 60s, this Article 370 had been eroded. Mm -hmm. itself uh, by the various uh, previous governments and uh, now was the time uh, when uh, 370 needs needed to be uh, abolished and uh, now uh, uh, India is one nation with one flag with one constitution and every people from Kashmir to Kanyakumari can be one and uh, it's like if I live here in Massachusetts and uh, I want to go and settle in Texas I cannot because I'm not a do uh, domicile of Texas. Hmm. Can you imagine that? Sure. Uh, so that is the case that we had in Kashmir. That they but also there has been some backlash against the government's decision, especially in the foreign media and some other you see, You see, foreign media is actually driven by uh, what certain lobbyists will tell okay. them, what they will want to promote. There is a narrative in uh, foreign media which is driven by certain interests mm -hmm. and they have created that narrative to showcase India in a bad light. Well, we are also media, but I don't agree with your view, but that's okay. Yeah, sure. you know, this is a free country. Sure, absolutely. You have your opinion, I have my opinion, sure. but I am saying mm -hmm. because I am from Kashmir, mm -hmm. I know the true realities of Kashmir. Mm -hmm. I uh, born, I am born and raised there, I have lived there and I have been pushed out. Mm -hmm. See, nobody over the years has ever talked about the Kashmiri Hindus, the atrocities they have felt, the mm -hmm. genocide they have felt, mm -hmm. they have been victims of. And nobody has ever raised a voice when our women were raped, mm -hmm. uh, our men were murdered, and our houses were looted and burnt. Can you believe? So what is the, if you can just uh, tell us a little bit about the, the population ratio, like, you know, what percentage are Hindus and what percentage are Muslims? You, you may be very surprised because uh, Kashmir for centuries and thousands of years was totally uh, predominantly Hindu. And, and uh, we our mention is in Mahabharat, the oldest text uh, written anywhere, Nilmat Puran comes from Kashmir, the oldest written history, Raj Tarangani, mm. anywhere in the world, oldest written history is from Kashmir. Mm. And uh, that's why Kashmiri Hindus were called Pandits, because mm. they were mostly in uh, spiritual knowledge and that's what they promoted. Even when Shankaracharya wanted to revive uh, Hinduism in India, he had to come and debate with the Kashmiri Pandits. Mm. Once he convinced them of his uh, theories about Hinduism, then only they guided him how he can revive Hinduism in India. So we were totally Hindu dominated place. Mm. In 1338 is when the first Muslim ruler took over mm. and that too uh, with the consent of the local population. We invited these people in and we gave them the opportunities mm. and within first 50 years mm. Once the Muslim ruler took over, our population was half. Hmm. Because of conversion? Forced conversion. Forced conversion. And uh, since 1338, in last 680 years, 
the population has gone from absolute majority, hundred mm. percent, to now like three to five percent. Only three to five percent. Only three to five percent. <clears throat> really? Yeah. Mm. History will tell you. I know you are so much interested in history. We have had seven exoduses mm -hmm. in which the Kashmiri population was given three choices: either convert, or get killed, mm -hmm. or leave. Mm -hmm. So. We have left over the years in these six, seven, 680 years, seven times we have been forced out. And one time actually, the uh, uh, people uh, went as a, uh, a representation, made a representation to Sikh Guru and he gave his shahada to protect us. Hmm. And, and that's also part of history. Uh, we have struggled in Kashmir. Um, we were hoping after the independence things would improve. Uh, but that has not been the case and finally in 91 we were pushed out in 1990 actually pushed out and uh, now only less than 5,000 people live in Kashmir Valley. The rest 400,000, we are a small minuscule community, are now thinly uh, spread out all over India mm -hmm. and living as refugees in their own country. Mm -hmm. Imagine living as refugees in their, their own country. Yeah. Uh, in, 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 in most uh, horrendous uh, conditions. Well, we saw a lot of uh, very warm reception to the article yeah. uh, here in the U.S. Those Kashmiris yeah. were yeah. here yeah. and there was a big reception. Yeah. Anyway, this was a bonus discussion on Kashmir, but I yes. uh, appreciate your uh, time and all the best with the conference. Yes. Uh, well, can I make a last appeal? Absolutely. You know, okay. the, um, sure. Uh, we would want people who are interested to know what the contributions of Hindus have been in American life, American society. We have come here in last five to six decades in large numbers. We have been coming to U uh, United States of America for a long period of time. But in last six to se uh, seven decades, a large portion of us have come. Now we are like four million people in this country uh, and we are actually with other estimate of other people who uh, believe in Hindu value system, that number takes us up to like 15 million. Mm. And we are the people who have come here and realized the American dream or are working on realizing this dream and working hard. And in doing so, we are also uh, making contributions to make American life a better life. So uh, also we want to engage the local American population non-Hindus and non-Americans in a debate with us how we can make life better in America. So uh, this conference is about the theme uh, is uh, uh, share our story, the story of American Hindus, appreciate the opportunities that America has given us and to engage the American society in a dialogue to make life better for our children in this country. So I am requesting everybody who has not registered as of yet, please go to our website. The website address is threads, T-H-R-E-A-D-S, 2019.org, and you will get all the information about registration uh, on that website. Uh, the uh, regular re registration is only $200 per person. Uh, for three days. Obviously. For three days, and it includes uh, all your meals, four breakfast, meals, breakfast, snacks. lunch, snacks, dinner, and uh, uh, with four-star hotel facilities and uh, on uh, for the senior people it's just fifty dollars mm. and um, for children uh, age 10 and about till uh, the university level children we want our next generation to come and participate so we made it free for them excellent uh, we have worked hard uh, through the uh, support of our well-wishers uh, who came and gave us this idea said let us bring youth uh, and then uh, make it free for them. So all the youth, young children are asked to come and participate. They will know about uh, what are the contributions their parents and the generation before them have made to American society. And they will also know what is the vision of these Hindus for going forward. Uh, so it is uh, supposed to be a very interactive session and also give an opportunity to network with the 50 to 60 top leading Hindu uh, Americans uh, and the, the opportunity it will provide to you will be enormous to expand your horizon. So please do come if you have not already registered and for those who have registered I will see you 
along with Upendra ji yes, on Friday yes, evening sure. at 5.30 at Hilton, Woburn, Boston. Look forward to see you there. Namaste. Sanjay, thank you very much for your time and thank you uh, so all much. the best and see you at the conference. Thank you and it's been a pleasure to be with you here talking Always, to sure. you. Absolutely. And, uh, we'll do another session on Kashmir though. Anytime, sure. anytime. I have a lot of stories yeah, to share. Yeah, no, I, I didn't know a lot of things you said about it. Yes, so, so let's do a session whenever important. you have time. Okay. Yes.